becoming a full-time starter for just one season. Mitch Trubisky from North Carolina is seen by many as a first-round selection in the upcoming NFL Draft. The former three-star dual-threat quarterback from Ohio spent his first three seasons backing at Marquise Williams before finally starting during the 2016 season. After a highly productive season, he decided to forego his eligibility and enter the NFL Draft. At North Carolina, Trubisky mainly lined up in shotgun like in this play and used a lot of play actions to freeze the linebacker. He shows good touch and good accuracy on this post route to his receiver over the middle of the field. In my opinion, Trubisky's best fit in the NFL is with the San Francisco 49ers. Head coach Kyle Shanahan compares his own stretch offense with his natural athleticism, giving him an easier transition to start his career. While the 49ers have the second overall pick, I don't believe they'll actually take him at that junction. However, Trubisky might fall in the draft, allowing them to trade for him later on. Another possible landing spot could be with Hugh Jackson and the Cleveland Browns at pick number 12. In one season of play, Trubisky showed a quick release, plus accuracy, and was surprisingly slippery in the pocket. Poor pocket awareness from the edge rushers, how he sometimes panics under pressure during plays, and limited experience are his biggest weaknesses. So what grade we give Trubisky? We're giving Trubisky an early second round grade, and here's why. At North Carolina, they ran an up-tempo zone read scheme where they relied on many read pass options to stretch the defense, like in this play versus Florida State. In this play, Trubisky has a choice to hand the ball off to his running back or throw the bubble screen to his wide receiver based on the defense's alignment. On short and medium throws, Trubisky is generally very accurate. His passes are catchable, consistently hitting his receivers between the numbers even outside the hashes. On this curl route versus Duke, his pass is exceptional, allowing the receiver to box out the defender even when well covered. His release is quick, and once he finds his target, he has plenty of arm strength to get the ball there. Versus Florida State, the Tar Heels set up a double slant concept. He identifies the outside receiver as his target, and then pump fakes, waiting for the edge rusher to vacate his throwing line. After the defender gets pushed past, Trubisky places the pass low in only a position where the receiver can get the ball for a completion. Deep throws are his biggest enemy, and he consistently missed them under throwing, just like in this pass versus Georgia. While he has plenty of arm strength to make every NFL throw, he needs to trust that his receiver can catch up to the pass. In this play, his receiver has a full step advantage, and then he has to slow down and invite the defender back into the throw to make a play. Another example of this can be seen versus Virginia Tech. Just like before, he leaves the ball short, allowing the defender back into the play to break it up. Mechanically, he is a tall upright passer who can throw from different levels, but he overly relies on his arm rather than proper hip drive and footwork to shift his weight. After the play action versus Florida State, he hops twice and then throws the pass without fully stepping into the throw. While he does complete the pass for a big gain, relying on arm strength without the footwork to match is a reoccurring issue for him. On the run, he has plenty of room to plant and step into this throw, but he'll sometimes drift and throw across his body. This will cause accuracy issues like in this goal line attempt in the same match where he puts the ball too low. While he generally has good accuracy and a strong enough arm, he doesn't throw with the best anticipation, and he will often stare down his receivers waiting for them to get open. Here's an example at the end of the Duke game, where he's completely oblivious to the pass rush while staring down his receiver for the game-ending interception. I mentioned that Trubisky is a bit oblivious to the pass rush sometimes, and that theme is much more common when it deals with sensing edge rushers. Versus Florida State, he takes his drop back and stands at the back end of the pocket. This allows the pass rusher to wrap around his blocker and angle straight at the QB. Trubisky realizes too late, and gets taken down for the sack. As a side note, this was not even his blind side. This was in his playside field division, which is a bit concerning. Part of this can be fixed by stepping up to the pocket, making the angle more difficult for pass rushers. But if he does not develop this vital skill, top tier edge rushers will destroy him. As a decision maker, he is typically very reliable not forcing throws. This trait does not always carry over to his play while under pressure. There are two plays in particular that stood out to me as I went through his film. The first is with the same Florida State game in the third quarter. In this play, Trubisky drops the snap, picks it up and rushes through his reads, panicking to get rid of the football. He completely misses the underneath linebacker, standing about 8 yards or so down the field from him. Luckily, the pass was only deflected instead of being intercepted. Back in the Georgia game at the beginning of the season, the offense is in their own end zone and the coach calls a screen pass to the tailback. Number 96 on the defense immediately speeds to the backfield since the center released the block for the running back. Trubisky avoids the defender, but as he scrambles, he passes the ball to the running back, who instinctively catches it and gets tackled for his safety. While the running back probably feels bad for catching it, Trubisky should have known better with the defender breathing down his throat. The only smart move here is to ground the pass at the running back's feet, and hopefully gain room for your punter on third and long. 
As a QB, you need vision to see the full field and find open receivers, but you also can't lock onto them. Going over the Duke play before, he definitely does that from time to time, but it also impacts his ability to see defenders in space. While he only threw six interceptions on the season, many of them were simply due to poor vision and missing underneath defenders. In this play versus Virginia Tech in the middle of the fourth quarter, he completely misses the linebacker thinking his receiver is wide open. This happens a surprisingly high number of times and it's painful to watch even when the defense could not capitalize. Here's another example for Stanford where Trubisky stares down a receiver and then doesn't see the zone defender over the middle of the field. Once the wide receiver broke free from his defender, he assumed he was open and threw the interception without seeing the defender waiting space. As an athlete, Trubisky is surprisingly slippery and it's one of his best traits. If a pass rusher is in his field of vision, he does a great job of avoiding the sack. Take this play versus Stanford in the 2016 Sun Bowl. Trubisky does a fantastic job avoiding the pass rush and keeping his eyes down the field looking for the throw. He then shows plus scrambling ability to escape the pocket and gain yards on the ground. My only negative is how he holds the ball while he scrambles inside the pocket. Versus Florida State in the third quarter, he avoids the pressure and then holds the ball away from his body with just one hand. The way he holds the ball opens the opportunity for pass rushers to strip him and he had four fumbles in 2016. In the future, he needs to hold the ball with two hands to prevent this. From a pro comparison standpoint, I think Andy Dalton from the Cincinnati Bengals fits him the best in my opinion. Both quarterbacks have quick releases who are generally accurate passers. They have similar above average arm strength with good mobility in the pocket. Both quarterbacks also struggle with pocket awareness, not fully sensing pressure coming from the edge, just like in this play versus Virginia Tech. Also, both played in a very QB friendly system in college without many snaps from under center. Overall, Trubisky has some high-level traits that could make him a franchise quarterback in the future, but there are definitely some red flags. Him not being able to unseat Marquise Williams, who ended up going undrafted, is a red flag to me. His play under pressure, and how his mechanics and vision eroded when he feels stress, is also an issue to me. In games against ranked opponents, there's also a significant drop-off in production, as evidenced by this chart. In the NFL draft, he should go somewhere in the first round. If I was a GM, I would not pull the trigger unless I was confident I could protect him from edge rushers and that he could overcome the mental hurdles of pressure and exotic coverage schemes. Well that's all I have for you. If you liked this video and you want to support the channel, feel free to follow the links to my PayPal and my Patreon accounts. Also you can follow me on Twitter at Samyar Gold.